Hey guys, I'm really honored to be here today. Um, one, to receive the award and also to be able to speak to you guys. I love coming back and working with students at Auburn. I love my time here. So it's always good to get an excuse to come back. Um, like Dr. Connor said, I'm a food safety quality assurance manager. So throughout the talk today, you may hear me reference FSQA. That's what that stands for. And specifically right now I'm with Tyson and I work in our distribution business unit, which umbrellas are warehousing as well as our transportation fleet. So it's a little bit different sector of what you may normally think about when you think about poultry science. So I'll tell you a little bit about who I am. I grew up in South Alabama in Sampson, that's down in Geneva County. It's about an hour north of Panama City Beach, if you guys are familiar with that. Um, I actually grew up on a ConAgra broiler farm. We also did row crops with peanuts and cotton and did a little bit of beef and swan production as well. I started my academic career actually at the University of South Alabama. I wanted to be a physical therapist. And I was living in Mobile, I was living in the city. It just didn't appeal to me long term. So somehow I ended up, I knew I wanted to come to Auburn, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, and Dr. Brewer was the department head. And actually I had talked to Dr. Connor when I came up for a visit and somehow I ended up in poultry science. Uh, there was kind of a direct connection between the anatomy and physiology of physical therapy as well as poultry science. So career path, I graduated in 2004 um, and I basically took the highest bidder. I went to the company that offered me the most money that was not in Alabama. So I ended up in South Carolina and I had a year contract with a company that fully cooked beef, pork, and chicken products. They did a lot of national account stuff, um, Bojangles, you know, just throw some, some names out there. Um, I worked with them for a year and it just wasn't a fit long term for me. I didn't see the opportunity there that where I wanted to see myself five and ten years down the road. And it just so happens that there was a Tyson plant about five miles down the road. So I said, oh, well, I'll go do Tyson for about six months and figure out what I want to do with my life, whether it be stay in the industry, do something else, maybe come back for grad school. Well, that was about 11 years and four or five states ago. So it, it worked out for me in the end. Um, so from South Carolina, uh, that was actually a beef and pork fully cooked plant that I worked at. Anytime you go to Taco Bell and you eat ground beef or you eat a Pizza Hut pizza with the sausage toppings on the top, that's what we did in Columbia, South Carolina. I was there for about three years and then I said, you know, I want to I want to do something different. I'm going to stay with Tyson, but I want to learn a new business unit. So I transferred over to our IBP sector and that's all of our fresh meats. So that's our big pork and beef plants that you see out in the Midwest, along with our bacon, our ham plants. So coming from a poultry science background, if you do the math, I've worked more with beef and pork than I actually have in poultry science over the years. So you'll always hear me talk about interbreeding with other departments so that way you get a, a wider span of academic background. From IVP, I traveled all over the Midwest. Um, I went to pretty much every pork and beef plant that we have. It was more of a training position, but it was really good experience because growing up on a beef farm, I wasn't used to feedlots and large scale slaughter facilities like what you'll see out there. From IVP, um, it was time to move on. I haven't been in the poultry group yet, so that's where I took my next step. I moved down to Arkansas, and I worked in a further processing poultry facility. So if you ever go to KFC and you order hot wings, or Pizza Hut and you order boneless wings, it's likely that you've eaten something that I've produced. From there, it was time, about three and a half years, that's usually about my cutoff point, um, it was time to learn something new and an opportunity came open in Northwest Arkansas in our distribution business unit. So I was able to take all of my FSQA background and move over into distribution and now you'll see a lot of recalls that are on TV or um, anything that goes on social media. Somebody takes a picture of a truck going down the road or you hear about avian influenza affecting the United States. I've got a hand in that somewhere, whether it be with our external exports or dealing with the USDA. 
some of the projects that I work on, um, that kind of ties in to my day to day, but you know, I was telling some students earlier, the job that I have now, I can walk into work every day for a week and never know what I'm gonna do, and it's always something different. So one day it may be something very chaotic, and the next day I may be working, developing a new system for transportation where we're monitoring GPS location and temperatures throughout the transportation process. So fun facts about my day-to-day -day life. So I spend a lot of time at the landfill. That sounds crazy, right? But we do have situations where we make product and something happens and it's just not fit for human consumption. Maybe it's fit for animal consumption and that's a whole different sector, but I kind of play a role in helping to determine where we slot that product to. So some of the organizations that I get to work with on a daily basis, um, nonprofit events, um, junior league events, which I'm a member of junior league, um, the Northwest Arkansas Food Bank, um, Community Center, Children's House. A lot of these guys, they benefit directly from some things. If we produce something from a customer, I'll just throw KFC out there just, just for sakes. Um, we produce something for them and it's not quite right. So they don't want it, but maybe we can sell it to somebody else or even donate it to a nonprofit facility. So we save money going to the landfill and then we do a good deed for our local community. So another thing I get to work with, and I mentioned animals. So if we have, let's say, leg quarters affected with avian influenza, we can't export them, we can't give them to a food bank for some reason or another, and we just don't have anywhere for them to go. There's actually large animal sanctuaries throughout the United States, and one of the largest ones is right in Eureka Springs. It's about 45 minutes from Northwest Arkansas, and they have about 125 big cats and bears. So if you guys have ever seen The Hangover and they talk about tigers don't like pepper, it's actually true. So as I'm going through product, I can determine what we can give to these guys versus what can go to other avenues. So um, I always like to spend a lot of time out there working with them because they actually are USDA inspected as well. So they have a veterinarian that monitors the diet that the cats and the animals can eat and what they can't eat. So I get to spend a lot of time out there with them working on figuring out what product we can give. And I love cats and pools, so. <laughs> so a little bit about Tyson. So Tyson was found in 1935 in Springdale, Arkansas. And it was a Tyson family deal where they started with eggs and poultry and it kind of expanded into doing sales in Chicago. And then from there, um, they started doing slaughter. So up until about the late, mid to late 60s, Tyson was purely a slaughter plant, whole chickens, maybe some cut up stuff, just your normal everyday grocery. Well, remember I said I worked in North Little Rock? So one day, um, we, Don Tyson had to go down, we were selling chicken to a plant that was owned by another company in North Little Rock. And somehow they had a business meeting at the end of the day, Don Tyson owns this plant, and that was our first Tyson further processing plant for poultry. So a little bit about our statistics. We've got about 113,000 team members uh, worldwide. How many of you guys have seen that Facebook post going around that Tyson is gonna start shipping live birds overseas and we're cutting 75,000 team members? So if you look at that number, it's not true, guys. We're, we're hiring every day. I've got two guys sitting in the back and they're looking at about nine positions that they need to put somebody in today if we have somebody. We've got about 11,000 independent farmers. Of course, that varies between poultry and beef and pork because the business unit runs a little bit different with contract growers versus just buying outright. And we're in about 130 plus countries. We actually have team members that live in Africa, China, you know, you name it, we've got something going on, whether it be sales or, or operations in those locations. So being from Alabama, most people, you say Tyson, well, it's chicken. But at the end of the day, we do a little bit of everything. Um, and one of the things that's not on here is pet foods. So we're pretty big in the pet food market as well. 
I'll just throw some of our brands up there. Um, every year, just about it, we merge or acquire or do something. We're always looking to diversify our portfolio. Um, with the past years, we've seen avian influenza hit companies, corn prices have fluctuated, and having that diversified portfolio has helped us where other companies that may be poultry specific have struggled. We've been able to lean against our prepared foods and our beef and pork operations, and we kind of seesaw through the years and we support each other and at the end of the day always have a profit. So this past year, one of our biggest um, acquisitions that we've had since buying IBP in the early 2000s was Hillshire Farms. So that brought us brands like Jimmy Dean, Ballpark, um, Sara Lee is a big one. We got all of their bakery products with that, so that's pretty exciting. And this slide, this is some of the things that you just kind of step back and you're like, Tyson does that? So if you've ever seen the refrigerated section and the pet food, that's the fresh pet, fresh pet food. That's one of our business ventures. Uh, True Chews is actually a beef jerky, or I'm sorry, a chicken jerky product that we make in our one of our Iowa plants that we used to make hams and things there. It just wasn't profitable long term. But we came into the market during the time that other companies were using ingredients from China and there was a lot of dogs getting sick and a lot of lawsuits and stuff going on. So we were making this in the U.S. with all U.S. ingredients. So it was a very, very good business venture for us. And we are expanding that annually. It's been really exciting. Um, so the Doritos Locos Tacos. You guys, you've had those, you like those? Well, 100% of those shells are made at our tortilla factory in Northwest Arkansas. We have several, um, several of those facilities elsewhere through the U.S. We do a lot of pizza crust as well as other types of bakery items. Um, we're the number one tortilla producer in America. So um, three happy cows. If you guys have ever been to the fresh market or you've been to Taco Bell and had their yogurt parfait, um, this was a venture that we took over a couple of years ago and it's kind of, we've kind of moved away from it. It wasn't um, maybe quite as profitable or the area that we wanted to move into long term, but we actually had retail yogurt on the market and all of the Taco Bell parfaits were for our recipe. So let's look at some of our brands. You know, there's a lot of talk back and forth with um, JBS Swift purchasing different companies and competing with us on who makes the most chicken, who makes the most beef. So you can just kind of glance over and see brand wise, number one in fresh chicken. Bacon is another one of our, we own the largest bacon plant in the U.S. Um, since we've acquired the Hillshire Farms group, we have Jimmy Dean and that has really pushed us forward in our breakfast area. <coughs> Smoked sausage, lunch meat, hot dogs, obviously everybody loves ballpark. And then check that last one out, waffles. So every year, um, I, I mentioned a while ago that we have a, a diversified portfolio. That prepared food segment, it works well for us, if you think, in the grand scheme of things, because we have IBP and we have the Tyson Poultry Group. So we're producing all of our raw materials. So it only makes sense for us to make finished consumer materials, right, that you can send out to food service or you can put in a retail market. And then we also have our own warehousing and distribution network. So at the time that we were looking at Hillshire Farms, a lot of people in the industry and even the banking industry said, you know, that might be a little bit bigger pill than you can buy it off. But at the end of the day, we knew that we had that distribution network and we were going to realize value from that. And it's worked out well so far. So we've been real happy. Talk about pepperoni. We're the number one pepperoni producer. So anytime you're eating pepperoni on a frozen pizza, it's likely made by us. And I mentioned we're number one tortilla producer. So two of our research and development facilities, um, just a, an hour ago I was over at Meat Science and Tom Bonner was in there speaking and he has a meat science degree but he's actually worked in the ingredients area. So he's had the, uh, the luxury of actually working at one of our research facilities. So we have um, a location with Hillshire and we have a small pilot plant that we used to use in Springdale that we no longer use 
and we also have our discovery center. So if you guys have ever been involved in sensory testing or any sort of research and development, that whole entire place has 20 plus kitchens that's devoted to everything research involved. We also have sensory labs and also a mini pilot plant that has many versions of all the same processing plant that you would see in a large scale operation. So in addition to t regular Tyson research and development, we'll have people that come in from our suppliers, whether they be ingredients, um, product packaging, we have chefs that come. It's, it's really a varied group there. So you can kind of see our location map. Um, this has been updated since we have merged with Hillshire. So not only do we have our world headquarters in Northwest Arkansas, we have a corporate location in Chicago, and then we also have our IBP location in uh, North Sioux City slash Dakota Dunes, South Dakota. So we've kind of spread out a little bit. This is just our domestic operations. So I want to talk a little bit about Donnie Smith. Um, he's our CEO. He's been around um, acting as CEO since 2009. He's been with the company since 1980. And I want to talk about him because if you guys haven't heard him speak before, go to YouTube, look him up, and just listen to him talk because this guy, he's a UT grad um, from Knoxville. He has an animal science degree and he started working at a feed mill right out of college, you know, just a regular Joe. And he's worked his way up and he's one of the youngest CEOs that has taken over such a large company in the whole entire world. And he's just a real personable person. And I'll talk a leader, about leadership a little bit later, but he is one of the people that I idolize when it comes to servant leadership. So he's also on Twitter, so if you guys tweet, he's on there. I don't, that's not cool for your, your age group still, is it? Um, Tyson Foods produces approximately one out of every five pounds of chicken, <coughs> beef, and pork. So think about that next time you take a bite of some protein. So just throwing some numbers out there, um, average weekly production, Poultry obviously is a pretty big number if we're counting by head because they're much smaller than beef and pork. A uh, number of facilities. A lot of people ask, you know, where, where all do you guys have facilities? So that just really puts the numbers to it. Notice how many prepared foods facilities we have. So that really shows you where the food industry is going. So what does this mean for you and I in the agricultural industry? With our growing population, that only means that we're gonna to have to produce more food to feed that population. So we're looking at by 2050 that we'll have to make 70% more food produced today. So that means we're gonna to have to make improvements and we're gonna to have to become more efficient because right now we're, we're maxing out our beef plants, we're you know maxing out rice production. So we're gonna to have to figure out what to do. So with that, what kind of people work at Tyson Foods? So not everybody that comes in comes in in a chicken plant or a beef plant or a pork plant. So we have lawyers, social media experts, people that specialize in FEMA because we do a lot of disaster relief, people that live in Washington, D.C. and lobby and work with um, government, graphic designers. We do a lot of stuff work for us, so we want to make sure that we give back. Um, just to mention a few things, our, we do a lot of hunger relief work. Um, we're a partner with Feeding America, and we have a commitment to donate so many pounds of protein per year. Um, you can see over 100 million pounds since 2000. Um, we also do a lot of local donations. So plant-wise, plant they also have the opportunity to work with their local food pantries or local churches that do hunger work as well. Meals that matter, that's something that, you know, we've had a lot of large natural disasters lately, whether it be hurricane or tornado or flooding. And the straw that really broke the camel's back was the Joplin, Missouri tornado. That's about 45 minutes north of Northwest Arkansas. And it was a, I think an EF5 that came through there and it, it shredded the entire town at this, about the same time that the um, tornadoes came through Mississippi and North Alabama. So we kind of got into a bond because we have barbecue competition teams and we always send them out to cook for these locations and try to help people that are coming out, whether it be the National Guard or people that are just helping cleaning up. 
So we wanted to do a little bit more and we actually took an 18 wheeler truck and we outfitted it with sleeping quarters, supplies, everything. So we're prepared within 24 hours of a tornado hitting or any other natural disaster that we can roll out and we can stay for weeks on end and just cook for all of the disaster people. Um, we also do a lot of other stuff. So it's usually a convoy when we head out. So you think about some things like ice that the National Guard or disaster relief workers need that you may not have readily available because you don't have electricity. So we try to do as much as we can in that arena. Um, partnered with that is Team Rubicon, and that's a group of veterans that came to us and they go out and they do a lot of cleanup work and especially after the fact when removing a lot of the debris. So we also outfitted a truck for them that has sleeping quarters and it operates as a basically an office hub. It has Wi-Fi and giant TVs on the wall and everything that they can keep up with what's going on because those guys, they'll go out for several months on end after a disaster. I talked a little bit about location-based giving and volunteerism. Whether it be something that we're doing to the community or even for our own team members that maybe experience something like a house fire, our plants have the ability to, to get together and do some work as far as that. So if you guys are more interested in learning about that, you can go to our Tyson homepage, tysonfoods.com, and there is a tab at the top called Ways We Care, and you can see that um, the drop-down list over on the side that there's several different items that you can pick from. So life lessons and words of wisdom. So I'm gonna ask, yep, I'm gonna ask my cohorts to come up here with me. I've got Isaac Howard. He's a 2012 poultry science grad. And Hunter Ray, he's not an Auburn guy, but we'll forgive him, at least he's not from Alabama. Um, these guys are a plant manager and assistant plant manager of Tyson and Bluntsville. So we've been talking to a lot of students this week about life lessons and things to just take home with you as you're finishing up your academic career. So as we get to something, if you guys want to interject or at the end, we'll also have questions that they can help with. So I talked a little bit about servant leadership. And I know that Hunter, when he's looking for somebody, he's repeated this over and over this week, leadership skills. There are people that do what I do they have forestry degrees. They don't know anything about meat or transportation or anything when they come out of school, but they have those leadership skills and they have the science background and the ability to learn. He's also talked a lot about problem solving because when you're out there, I thought, oh, I got to work for Tyson. You know, they have this resource structure built, but at the end of the day, I'm making a lot of decisions that affect the company as a whole. You know, a $40 billion company and one mistake by me can be, just end up in the news, craziness. Um, Open-mindedness, talking a lot about, well, I'm an animal science, I don't really wanna work with poultry or vice versa, or maybe even ag econ. You can't imagine yourself going to work for Tyson because we're a poultry company. At the end of the day, we probably have something that you would do or you would enjoy. Social media awareness, this goes both ways. If you guys are going to interview with a company, you need to do research on them. What are they doing on social media? What are they talking about? What kind of sustainability plan do they have? And likewise, and I, I can probably speak for these guys, I'm not gonna hire you unless I Google you and see what you're doing on Twitter or Instagram or whatever else is going on out there. Continued learning. Um, this was a big one for some of my friends because when they thought that they got that degree and they got that piece of paper, that was the end of it. That was just the tip of the iceberg because you've got that base knowledge and it's a whole different world when you get out into industry. Uh, internships. So these guys are currently hiring for about inter six internship positions in North Alabama. And I know that when I look at a resume and you haven't done an internship, I'm gonna hesitate because you don't have that experience with the culture that whether it be a chicken plant or a high stress corporate environment that maybe involves budgeting and margin management and stuff. So anything that you can do that gives you that experience for a resume is worth it. Uh, networking, personal and professional. So 
guys, it's, it's a big money industry, but it's really small at the end of the day with the people that you know. Um, Isaac, we've known each other since he was a sophomore or so, and now we're working together. Um, one of the guys that were, was speaking over in Meat Science today, it turns out he worked for a vendor. He had his office at our Discovery Center, and we've actually communicated via email, but we had never met until we figured out we knew each other today. Uh, set personal goals. This is something that um, I do for myself and Tyson pushes it. We have an annual review period that we do every year. We have goals that we have to do and one of those for me is I have to maintain a personal development plan. So if I get settled in my job and I don't want to go to continuing education and I don't want to go to any industry meetings or talks or anything like that, Tyson doesn't really let me get away with that. They expect me to keep my learning goals going. Find a mentor. So the College of Ag, um, they've started this mentor program and I think it's one of the best things that we've done in a long time. And we sat down with these guys and um, I, I don't know if Hunter can take over some Auburn, he might have to get him an Auburn hat and a t-shirt or something. but. I know um, these guys out of North Alabama, they're going to set up and they're going to pick up a lot of kids for mentoring positions. And that's just another way for us to connect with you guys as well as for you guys to get to know Tyson as, in the industry as a whole and just kind of get some, some background and, and maybe some guidance on where you want your career path to go. Become community minded. Um, myself, I can't preach that enough. Because if you're not giving back to the community, then you're not vested in what you're doing. And never stop working on yourself. And that just kind of goes back to keeping personal goals. So professional life, um, professional development that goes along with continued learning. Continuous improvement, that's something that we've been hitting hard on a lot with Tyson lately. We get into the mindset where this is the way we've done it for 20 years. This is probably the best way to do it. And we're trying to take a step back and reevaluate some of our processes to improve our efficiency. Hot topics in the food industry. Of course, we're gonna talk about micro, avian influenza, listeria, um, export issues. And some of the things that people and I know Isaac probably sitting in poultry science, he was like, oh, never gonna use any of this microbiology. Sure. And today, well actually yesterday, we were talking to a group and it's, people were asking about micro-related things and I didn't say a word, even though that's my background and that's what I do every day, but the emphasis has become on the plant personnel and the operations guys, they have to understand it. Keep in touch, um, I think that's a big one. Whether it be me keeping in touch with Dr. Connor in the department or with other people that I've worked with along the way, um, you never know who you're gonna run into. Never burn a bridge. It's a very small industry, so if you have something happen, don't burn your bridge because you never know who's gonna be your boss one day. Um, I spoke a little bit about company values. Um, benefits. This is one of the things that I did not look at when I graduated. Whoever had the most money on that paycheck is who I went with. And I didn't look at 401k, insurance, tuition assistance for graduate work. I didn't look at any of that. So that's definitely something you guys should consider. Location, location, location. Um, I will tell you Personally, I think it's a good idea to leave Alabama first. These guys, they think that they can give you a good start in Alabama and give you an opportunity to move out as you want and you get more experience. It's, it's all dependent on you and your personal preference, but I advise you to think really hard about it. You're young, you're just graduating, you're not gonna be tied down to major responsibilities. So take the opportunity to get out and experience the world a little bit. Sustainability and security for the long term. That is, that kind of hits home for me. The first company I went to work for, um, they co-packed for a very, very large retailer. In fact, it was about 80% of their business. And I asked the question, what happens if something happens with this customer? Am I still gonna have a job at the end of the day? 
yeah, yeah, we have a plan in place. Well, I ended up leaving that company to come to work for Tyson, but about six months later, they had a very catastrophic event happen and they closed. So you really need to look at that kind of stuff when you're out talking to employers. Your work environment, it makes a big difference on your life and your blood pressure. So if I was, or your ulcer status. So if I was in Bluntsville, you know, these guys, they're nice guys to work with, maybe not every day, every minute of the day. But if we didn't have a good working relationship, it would make me dread going to work every day. So you really need to look at that. And when you go out on interviews, try to look at interactions between people. Work-life balance, I'm not gonna lie, you're gonna graduate and you're gonna work a lot of hours to begin with. It's just part of paying your dues and learning the industry. Um, but just know if you perform and you excel and you put yourself in the right positions, you'll end up where you wanna be. Um, community involvement and philanthropy. That's, as I've interviewed with other companies through the years, I've, I always keep myself open to other opportunities. That's one of the questions that I ask and they always kind of balk at me. But if I work for a company that makes billions of dollars a year and they're not giving anything back to nonprofits or the community that they're in, I'm just gonna go ahead and mark them off the list. Anybody have any questions? Operations related, internship related? It is. Question on the, your last point there, because I know Johnny Smith, that's something that's near and dear to him in terms of, you know, Tyson is a corporate, you know, giving back to the community worldwide. Is that something you've developed within Tyson, just to be immersed in that environment, or do you come with that to Tyson, or a little of both? Well, I think it was a little of both. Um, when I was here in poultry science, I, we worked a lot with recruiting and outreach to high schools, and we did some events, but it wasn't to the extent maybe with nonprofits that I work with now. And, you know, just coming in that my first job with Tyson, the plant manager would leave every week for 30 minutes or an hour on a certain day. And one day I asked her, you know, where are you going? And she was going to an elementary school and just reading during reading hour. And that really got me to kind of thinking, that kind of puts us out there. It's, it's stress relief for me. And it makes me feel good that, we're, you know, my, I'm, I myself is out there doing something, but Tyson is supporting it as well. You know, so that, in fact, I've got a literacy event coming up in a couple of weeks and we're gonna take Buddy Chicken out and make a big appearance, so. Do you guys want to talk about that? Well, at the plant level, um, each of our divisions, we've got EBIS, uh, second processing, and further processing in Bluntsville. And then you've got um, plant coordinator positions that are responsible for ordering all the meat. Uh, and then we've got one that does purchasing, ordering all the ingredients, and then shipping. So, the uh, internships now, you spend two weeks in each area going through the plant. That's how we, we do those currently. And you provide a, like a, a wage or a salary? Or a yes. Salary? And we assist with uh, temporary living during that period too. So, so uh, 10 weeks? Um, no, most of them are set, set up based on how long the, the kids want to stay. Uh, we've had some that did two months, we've had some that did three and a half months. Uh, uh, they'll start in mid-May. And most of, Tyson offers a lot of internships through the Poultry Expo, and it was, what, last week? And those are four <laughs> months. And then at our location, we have three additional ones at each plant here in Alabama that we post and offer as well. So in addition to the plant-based ones, we also have other business students at corporate that offer internships. So you may have IBP that are looking for people to work in the beef and pork industry. Um, we also have R&D internships, and those go through a whole completely different process. You have to be a certain level in college and have so many classes and 
apply in advance and stuff. So it really just depends. We have a, a website on TysonFoodsCareers.com and it's an internship site and you can actually go out and you can look at internships as well as our full-time jobs that we have open to the outside. Um, sales internships, you, you name it, we pretty much do a little bit of everything. What's the craziest thing you've had happen in the last little while? You told some pretty good stories the last time. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so I had a, this is trucking related. So you know when you see a truck going down the road, they usually have a seal or a lock or something that's on the door. That's part of food security for us because if a truck driver stops at a truck stop, you don't want somebody in the truck messing around. So that's why we have those, those numbered sealed or high security cells. So that's part of my job is I investigate wreck loads or loads that have been broken into or something's happened with the driver. And I had a driver that was hauling pizza toppings and he left um, South Carolina and he was going to Dallas. And he got in Birmingham and at this point we didn't know anything about what was happening. We started getting phone calls from Pizza Hut and they were saying, what's going on? We, we've got people calling us from residential houses in Birmingham, Alabama. What's going on? So they looped me in because they knew I was from Birmingham, knew the area and stuff. And we started digging into it. And apparently this trucker did not work for us, but he saw that Tyson logo on the outside. And he was like, I'm going to get me a bunch of steaks and a bunch of chicken and thought he was just going to get the mother load. Well, he pops the truck open in Birmingham and it was full of pizza toppings, like Italian sausage crumbles. And he gets mad and he tries to set the truck on fire. Like it's frozen on the inside and there, it's just all this wet saran wrap and cardboard and stuff. And it doesn't burn, it just smolders. And then I guess he decides, I don't know if he had taken some drugs or whatever, but he started throwing cases off on people's doorsteps in a residential area. And so Pizza Hut for their stores, they have their 1-800 number on the side of the box. So these people started from this neighborhood started calling this 800 number. So we didn't say anything to the guy. We didn't know where he was. He wasn't one of our drivers um, and his dispatcher couldn't get in touch with him, whatever. So he, he closes the doors on this truck and to finish his drive into Dallas and gets there. And the plant was like, hey man, you're, what's wrong with your seal? It's broken. And he's like, oh God, I didn't know anything about that. And they opened it up and it was just all smoldered and everything on the inside. So you just never know.